We have a really special treat for everybody today. I'm way up in northern Vermont. Hi, my name's Lissy. I'm living on my farm here. We don't have a lot of power. We have not had a lot of power. It's gonna be literally like five times bigger than we've ever had. This whole project has been like a bit of a dream come true. You know, no longer did we have to worry about the, house, the the cabin burning up. I was a guide. I was one of the few guides in Vermont at the time. We knew we had to just do it over and do it right. And this is the original system. We added 2,310 watt panels, 6.2 kW. All right, so I'm here with Lissy, and we are about to turn her system on. Thank you so much for allowing us to come up here and film. You have such a beautiful property. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you're getting some new solar today. <laughs> yes, we are. So that's why I'm up here. We're going to see the old solar system. We're going to see the new solar system going in. And this is being installed by our friend Ben, who I have a previous video about. So from now on, I'm just going to let Lizzie take over and uh, share with us what's going on. We bought this property in 1995. My husband and I moved here. This was raw land. The power that was coming down this road ended $30,000 that way and $30,000 that way <laughs> and we were literally in the middle of um, an island of no power. We were in our young 20s, early 20s and we literally lived in a tent. That is the original yurt. They said it would last 10 years and it's still standing. We got our house built which took a year and then we got a solar system which was really small like this tiny little eight batteries probably big enough for a boat and we have had that system for the entire time until Monday when they're hooking this system up. From kerosene we went to lights from a battery. You know no longer did we have to worry about the, how, the, the cabin burning up. We were so excited to have the solar system that we got when we were 23. Um, but the system that we're about to get this many years later is uh, beyond <laughs> exciting. <laughs> it's like, wow. Are there any manual tasks that you do today that you're excited to switch over to electric? Whether it's grinding wheat or filling a basin for watering the animals. Oh gosh, that's um, such a good question. You know, I do have an electric meat grinder and I haven't used it because I was afraid of the power. Toasters. We use a toaster, but it's kind of an issue. It's always been an issue. Anything electric like that is just gonna really drain the system. A dehydrator for vegetables, that's been another one you can't use. I don't think we would ever graduate to getting a, a dryer. However, we could, maybe. Wow, that would be exciting. I mean, we could really start to dream. Yeah. I haven't let myself yet because I'm <laughs> sort of in disbelief that I will actually have that much power. We have to remember it is solar and it does mean when the sun is shining. If we have a blizzard and we can't clear our panels for a week, we're actually out of power again. But we know what that's like because we've been that way for 27 years. So that's not a, that's not a hardship. We're in a closet upstairs here, uh, and this is the original system. So we have the original charge controller. This is an old PWM charge controller, and we're getting 18 amps in, which is pretty good for those old panels. Then we have an old MX-60 here. Uh, which is going to be going downstairs, and then a Midnight Classic, uh, which is going to be abandoned. And there's a bunch of disconnects, the old Outback. Uh, this is a 12 volt inverter, 2000 watt, 250 amp breaker for that, and then a 12 volt DC load center. We got a generator input here, um, and then this is the AC load center here. So we're going to be tying the load center downstairs into this one and powering all their loads. And then we have some MC running down here, which is going to be this array here going downstairs to the, to the MX-60. So these are the batteries in here. It is quite a crude setup. So we got L16 REBs. They are connected in 12 volt configuration. Uh, these are six volt batteries. There's uh, eight of them total. There's no ventilation for them, which is not really safe. I replaced the old batteries about four years ago. They had 10 year old L16s in here that had pretty much reached the end of their life. 
they didn't have the capacity that they used to and given the, the limited capacity that's here. So there's 9.8 kilowatt hours usable um, and that's down to 50% uh, state of charge. So there's, there's 20 kilowatts total uh, but 10 usable. So downstairs we're going to 20 kilowatt hours but 18 usable. We're doubling their usable capacity uh, by switching from lead acid to, to lithium. And we're also going to speed up how fast they charge. Yeah. So. So they're going to be keeping this system, they're only going to have the old uh, charge controller hooked up to it. It wasn't worth taking that and adding it to a charge controller downstairs because I would have to completely rewire the array on the roof. So this is the old Trimetric. Um, it's attached to a shunt up in the, uh, with the old system um, and right now it says full. Um, this morning it said 75%. Uh, and it's got two buttons on here, so it tells you it's 13.2 volts, which they are running a saw right now. Uh, it was 14 just a second ago. Negative 33, so that's how much is actually coming out of the battery right now. Uh, even though we, we have a sunny day, they're, they're running power tools. For the last 30 years, what have you typically been using power for? Well, I mean, we have a washing machine. We don't have a dryer. We have a well. That's a big one. We also go to bed early. We don't... <laughs> <laughs> because if we didn't, we'd be in the dark. What was it about the current system that you felt was lacking that you wanted to go and get a new system? Well, mainly the batteries and the fact that they we wear them down so fast and even with maintaining them, it's just, they, they have a life. And, the and life how often short. do you have to replace them? We've replaced them twice, which is expensive. A, a decade a pack. <laughs> a decade a pack. That's right. it. That's what the life is supposed to be. But that's expensive, obviously. Are you adding any new electronics that you plan on putting on the new system? We can't even imagine <laughs> what we would want to add. But, I mean, certainly, yeah, we could add a fountain. We could add, like, all <laughs> kinds of really crazy, ridiculous things, especially when the sun is shining. We're going to make a lot more power than we're going to be using for a while. I mean, then we'll catch on that we can add all kinds of really fun things. Our old system is is 12 volt DC okay. at, with, an, with an inverter, so it does convert to AC. It's very small, so there are two charge controllers in there. One's working with one set of solar panels, the other is working with the other set of solar panels. We all came together and agreed, let's start over and do it right. We can take the old panels and channel them into this new system, but the new system is going to be far more efficient, mainly because technology um, has improved so much after all these years. I mean, the inverter we're getting, I, we couldn't believe it. It's a 48 volt system versus a 12 volt system. The solar panels are much more efficient than the old ones. We knew we had to just do it over and do it right. And uh, we are very excited, <laughs> really. This is the old PWM. And at the time, this was a, a big deal. Yeah. And hey, it worked for 30 years. I mean, what more can you ask for? Yeah. The PWM charge controller is set up, uh, and that array is set up to input 13.9 volts and outputting 13.2 volts. And so with how a PWM charge controller works, that's perfect. Um, but it wouldn't work well on, a, on, a, on an MPPT charge controller with a 48 volt system. Right now the carpenters and you have been running your lights and your saws off just this one inverter. Yep, yep. And you can hear it, hear it groan every time they turn their saw on. <laughs> have you or the homeowners needed to turn on a generator while you've been working out here? If it was during the winter, definitely would need to. But... The system has enough PV right now that it can cover the, the usage during the summer. The, the top ones are the original, and then the bottom are the second, and then that's the third. Three different phases. The top ones apparently are still charging. Wow. And those top ones look old. Yeah. What's the actual year on those? Uh, 1995. Wow. I know, right? I was a guide. I was one of the few guides in Vermont at the time offering dog sled tours. I have 17 sled dogs, uh, actually 15 sled dogs and two house dogs, 17 dogs in total. This particular team is a racing team and I may end up doing a really big race in Minnesota. That's my goal, um, called the Bear Grease. Right now they're all in training. There are four puppies, a mom and a dad and Auntie Luna. And then the other ones are just all my older team that have retired at this point. So we're in the basement of uh, Lissy and Bill's house and uh, 
installing a new off-grid system. This is the third day. We did uh, the PV on the barn and got all the wires pulled and everything. We'll probably be here one more day. We added 20 310 watt panels, 6.2 kW. And um, how many uh, did they already have that you're think, incorporating in with the new system? It was approximately 3 kW. Some of those are 30 years old, so <laughs> probably not producing what they used right. to be. So that's going to be going into three charge controllers, actually. Um, there's another one upstairs in the old battery room that we're going to be moving down here. It's an MX60. Um, and then we have these two FM100s. Um, so we're putting uh, the array on the barn into one of these and the array on the pole into another one of these. And then there's a, uh, an 8KW Radian inverter. Um, and six simplify 3.8 batteries. There's a total of 22.8 uh, kilowatt hours of storage. We're gonna be cycling them to 80% um, and with simplified batteries, cycling at 80% gets you uh, 10,000 cycles. So the Radian is two 4,000 watt inverters. This is the bypass for the system. So this is the AC output um, and then this is the uh, generator bypass. So that allows you to turn off the AC output and completely bypass the inverter with the generator. Okay. Um, just in case there's any kind of a failure, they can still have the ability to run their house off generator power. And can you uh, kind of hold that up, kind of just mock like where it's going to mount? Um, yeah, so this, <laughs> get, get fit it right now. But this goes, this goes right here and then there's a big cover that goes over this whole thing. Nice. Um, and you added those white circuit breakers? Uh, no, those came with it. So this is uh, this is charge controller output for one and two and charge controller input. So the PV ties in through these breakers. So you have the ability to completely isolate the charge okay. controllers. And you haven't added for the, what is it, 80? Uh, yeah, no, uh, it's an MX60. I'm going to put another two down here. The FM100s, uh, they can take up to 300 volts uh, input. Um, and then we're going with a 48 volt system here. Um, so 48 volt nominal output. So that's the uh, AC output. Um, and we're going to be tying, uh, actually this wire right here, that's a little bit short, uh, but we're tying that into the load center upstairs. Um, so right now their, their entire system is upstairs in a tiny little closet. So the closet upstairs wasn't big enough to fit all of this, so we moved it all down here. This is the first time we've used Simplify batteries. Um, they wanted to go with a lithium iron phosphate uh, chemistry just for longevity, and uh, I think they got tired of watering their old lead acid batteries. Uh, so we, we've installed quite a number of uh, Outback Radians before. Uh, we found it's a, it's a good product and it's pretty bulletproof. This is the Mate 3S, um, and we actually bought this as a, uh, it was pre-assembled, um, pre-wired. Um, it's just a lot easier to do it that way. That way you just hook up your inputs and outputs and you're all set. Um, but the Mate 3S allows you to control both of these charge controllers because there's, there's no way to control these without the Mate 3S. Um, and then it'll also allow us to see the MX-60. I don't believe we'll be able to control the MX-60 with it, but... Um, that allow us to see what it's doing. We use the wireways uh, for for systems like these. Uh, it just keeps everything neater and uh, makes it look a little bit more professional. Otherwise, you have a whole ton of conduits and battery cables and everything running everywhere. There are carpenters working, um, as you can probably hear, and uh, they they built this wall here. Uh, made it nice and sturdy because there's a lot of weight on it. Well, I, we're actually leaving the old system up and running. They're kind of uh, they kind of have a soft spot for that old system. Uh, so they, they do have a lot of DC uh, outlets and lights throughout the house. Uh, so they're gonna be leaving the 30 year old panels charging the old lead acid batteries and, uh, and then the rest of it's gonna be in the new system here. We've done some maintenance on the, the array on the roof here. You know, in the winter, it seems like just about every day they had to run their generator. Um, you know, and we're in Vermont, so it's cloudy a lot of the time. Um, but I think the goal was to be able to charge the system, um, you know, even on cloudy days. I'm using four, four gauge from the batteries to the bus bar and then um, parallel two watts from the bus bar to the uh, main breakers here. This is a pair of inverters. Each inverter is 4,000 watts. You can see where that ties into the actual inverter. 
Then they have an isolator bushing, which goes through to the underside for the positive and negative. We have tin plated copper bus bars, which come down. And it looks like we have three shunts here. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure why we have three. And then we have a pair of 175 amp breakers. And down at the bottom, the pair of breakers is then combined on this bus bar. And that's what goes over to the battery positive. Yeah, so this is for charge controller one, this is for charge controller two, and this is where the batteries hook up. And that way you can, that way this device knows everything that's going on in and out. Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, so this is the conduit for the solar, um, and then they ran an extra conduit um, that's just strapped to the wall in a nice fashion. Uh, that's for uh, AC power to the barn. Um, and then we have the we have the rapid shutdown switch as well. Um, that's to shut down the PV uh, in case of a, an emergency. Yeah. So so this array is operating at 120 volts um, per string, and so anything over 80, you need rapid shutdown. Um, so that's that's why we put this here. All right. So I'm here with Lissy, and we are about to turn her system on. I'm letting her do the honors. Uh, okay. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, you can turn that on too. Wait, okay, turning that on too. There it is. And that was that it. little charge controller there. Look at that. That's it. Congratulations. Thank you so much. We have a really. Oh, uh, no. No, it's not. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they should have a meter somewhere. All right. Oh, no, they do right here. Yeah, there there, go. there's oh, the hygr looks, hygrometer, uh, right? It hasn't been used in a while. But <laughs> <laughs> I think that may be part of the reason for. 